Good morning everyone. This week's Talking Thursday is slightly different to our usual talks. I spoke with Christian who is our learning and development facilitator about today's lockdown. Christian and I spoke about how this lockdown may be different, what we learnt from the first lockdown and that it's okay not to be so productive throughout lockdown. Hi Christian, how are you? Yeah I'm good thanks Hannah, really well. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm not bad, thank you. Um, so for those who, um, well, hopefully most of you have uh, seen and met Christian before lockdown and COVID, uh, Christian is our learning and development facilitator. Um, Christian, do you want to just give kind of a little overview for those who haven't met you yet or been in contact with you, kind of what you would do normally? Yeah, so um, obviously it's been a big change since uh, pre-pandemic uh, times. I joined in January um, and I work alongside Holly in the learning and development department. So I help uh, her with designing training programmes and creating the content for the training programmes. And then um, some of you will have met me when I came out and delivered um, our customer service training at the beginning of the year. Um, and we've got a sort of a whole other range of training programs that we offer and I help with uh, organizing and creating content and delivering them which has been a challenge um, of late but I'm hoping that I'll be back to coming out and meeting everybody and showing my face again soon. So as I mentioned um, earlier Christian and myself we're going to talk about this um, second lockdown a bit more just um, just we're going to have a chat about it like it's normal because unfortunately at this time it is almost normal for us. Um, so Christian, how do you think this lockdown will be different for us this time? So I think it's really great that you kind of started it by saying it's normal for us, because I think that's a really big part of it. So for a number of us, it has the potential to be sort of a largely similar experience, um, which I can understand is a bit of a worry. So um, speaking from a personal perspective, previously I was living with my parents, um, and now I've moved out, I live on my own in a single bed flat um, and I have less access to like a garden space or outside an outside area. So I do have some sort of real concerns going into this lockdown because it's different than it was last time. And um, you can see that uh, I'm doing November, although I have cheated slightly because it would be ridiculous for me to grow this out in three days. Um, <laughs> And so I think it's important, you know, kind of on that topic, and if I could be a little bit selfish to think about men's mental health, but I guess it's kind of relevant to everyone as well is, I think I'm really happy to admit that I'm a little bit scared about how this is going to roll out. Um, and not in a sort of like paralysed and really fearful way, but I think a healthy amount of apprehension around, you know, there's another lockdown going on kind of a starting point from us but like you said it's unfortunately normal for us now and so if you we think about it in a kind of optimistic way um the biggest advantage that we have is that we know what a lockdown is and we've kind of done a lockdown before and um, and i think you know a lot of the big questions have been answered so the first thing to think about is at time of recording it's four weeks Whereas last time it was just like, we're going to be on lockdown. And we all sort of sat around and went, till when? And they went, till whenever? Until the R number's down? Whereas now we kind of have been told 2nd of December. Um, and so it, I think often try to think about of it as how do you need an elephant? And the answer is well, one bite at a time. So four weeks, break it down into one week and it becomes a little bit less daunting. Um, so this is a really silly example, but Yesterday I ordered some cleaning supplies for my car because it hasn't been cleaned in a while because I haven't been using it that much. Um, but I thought to myself, well, if I schedule that in as something to do, that is a few hours on one of the weekends that I know I can't go anywhere, that I can do something that needs to be done. So if I could ask you, Anna, pre-pandemic, what did you know about social distancing or support bubbles? Uh, nothing. I mean, they were just words, you know, that weren't put together. Yeah, they're you, you, yeah, like you said, just two sets of words. Or how often had you taken a mask with you in your car or hand sanitised your hands every time you went into a building? No, never. And now, you know, it's like that, um, that it's actually a Obama meme. You go out, you normally go out with your phone, your purse and your handbag for me. And now it's phone, purse, handbag, mask. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and the amount of times I've got halfway down the road and gone, need a mask. Yeah. But you're you're so right that 
those things have become part of what we do. And so actually, I think if we cast our minds back to March and you think, you know, there's this huge global event that was going on. I was kind of glued to the news every night, waiting for the news brief. What's the rules today? What's the changes? What's the this? It was a long term event that kind of certainly for, uh, from, from my experience, I've never seen something dominate the news this much, you know, for this length of time. But as we said, we know what all those things are now. We kind of loosely know what the rules are. And so there's an, I, I think, a really good way to look at it is, well, we've come so far since the last lockdown that actually this one will be easier and more manageable for us because we kind of have done it before. It's a little bit of old hat. So I think that's certainly the way I'm trying to look at it. And I'm thinking about it, as I said, because of the time period as well, I think this is the only, the only way for us to kind of move forward with it, I guess. When we went into lockdown in March, um, it was coming into spring, it was coming into summer. And really selfishly, I'm so, so lucky and I was so grateful. I was able to spend time in the garden in the evenings or at the weekends. But this time it's going to be in the winter. And again, I'm very lucky and I know how lucky I am and I'm really grateful to still have that garden. But it's going to be dark, it's going to be cold, it's going to probably rain because it's the UK. Um, but so how do how do you feel about that, the fact that it's going to be winter this time? I totally understand where it comes from. And it's a little bit like, you know, to use a slightly outdated reference, it's a little bit like a game and the Game of Thrones episode in the news where everyone's like, it's winter, winter's coming, what are we going to do? <laughs> and I'm a big winter fan on a personal level. People think I'm a little bit strange for that, but I like the winter. So I kind of wanted to fight winter's corner a little bit and think about it in a in a positive way because as like you said there being less light the you know the and i mean not only was it nice weather during lockdown it was really nice weather like unreasonably nice for the uk um but i think there are some ways that we could sort of think about the winter and go. the first one i think that's really important to kind of think about is it is going to be winter but that is a positive if we're then going to be indoors because I don't want to be outdoors when it's cold and rainy. I don't want to be out there in the in the horrible conditions or when it's windy or so you can kind of enjoy the comfort of being inside more. Um, and if you think about, um, we were chatting a little bit about this before, like going to your car on a winter morning and how sort of grueling that can be. But there's a kind of a bit of a positive of going, actually, I can just look at my car out my window and go, I'm nice and warm in my house. So I think that's a really good side of it as well. Um, I did that this morning. I got up, I looked out the window, the temperatures dropped a little bit today and there was this sort of really nice layer of frost on the grass um, and the sunlight from the, from the trees was really beautiful. And I thought, that's a really nice winter sort of vista or view, but, I could enjoy it from the comfort of, I mean, I had literally have a radiator in front of my window so I could feel the heat from the radiator and really enjoy that. So I think that's a really big plus point. And, and like you said, if you're fortunate to have access to a garden space or you're fortunate to have access to, you know, space to go out, we, not much like the last lockdown, we can leave. And so leaving and going out in the winter can also be good fun. And um, I'll kind of sort of talk about that in a second but so I think that's the first point to really think about and the next one obviously is winter food so one of the reasons I love winter is because I love winter food I just think it's the best and you know soups and stews and roast dinners all that stuff's great and you know there might be a, a case for a lot of that food is a lot nicer when you cook it as part of being at home they're real home comforts aren't they and home cooked meals so I'm sure that we have recipes that go out and we you know we share them for sort of winter ideas which you know you could try or think about doing as part of you know being on lockdown but the main one for me about winter food is like desserts and cakes and things like that that are just you know summer food's great salads fruit tarts and things like that but it doesn't beat that kind of stodgy food that really sort of just sits well with you and makes you feel good inside um and then the other side to that is hot drinks, as another example. So a nation of tea drinkers, I've, one of my friends is obsessed with drinking tea. Like he's got a whole cupboard in his house of all different types of tea. And, and I'm a big coffee drinker and it's so much nicer in the winter. It kind of, sometimes in the summer, I 
feel like I'm drinking coffee to survive because I need, <laughs> need it to work me up. But in the winter, when it, like I said, it's cold and you can sort of enjoy it for what it is. Um, and the last point, a little bit um, that I've got today is winter clothes. So I think winter clothes are the best and, you know, blankets and all that sort of soft, soft, warm, kind of cuddly stuff that you get to do in the winter. And um, it's just, you know, really, really great. And I really enjoy those sides of them. I think so. Those are some positive things to look at. And um, if you kind of imagine. So I have a Scandinavian family. My grandfather was Danish and we have Danish uh family on that side and one of the things they have in Denmark is this uh, idea that they call it's pronounced hygge which was a, in vogue for a while a couple of years ago at Christmas and it loosely translate to the, translates to the idea of coziness in the winter so as an example I do quite a silly thing where you can see I have a television in the corner over there because you get a lovely view of the inside of my house um, and <laughs> That I sometimes will go onto um, YouTube through my TV um, and I'll put like a fake fireplace on my TV with the sound and then I'll put my side lights on so that's kind of the light isn't as heavy and then you can sit in a chair with a blanket with a cup of coffee if you're you know reading something or on your phone and it just creates that atmosphere in your house of sort of and it's hard to explain but that lovely like I said winter coziness that's just a nice feeling and so if we think about it again in terms of lockdown, we have the chance to enjoy those things, kind of enjoy the seasonality of winter and what it brings and not necessarily think, oh, well, just because it's going to be dark, it's going to be the worst time in the world. Because I actually think there are loads of positives that we can sort of look at. I do have to say um, I prefer summer clothes, but I, right. I understand the concept of blankets and getting cosy and things like that. I really do. But we haven't touched on Christmas because I understand it's quite a sensitive subject um, at the moment because we just don't know where we're going to be. But I think one other point I would like to add to that is I love the winter because I'm able to put my Christmas tree up and, you know, have that little bit of time with um, with Andrew. And, you know, we, we just get to put the Christmas tree up. And I love Christmas. I'm such a big kid when it comes to Christmas. So this actual lockdown gives me an excuse to put it up earlier. Yeah, no. <laughs> You're so right, though, like part of that Christmas period is the build up and the kind of getting it all together. And I know there's like you said, it's a difficult subject because people might be thinking, well, how are we going to do Christmas or what am I going to do for my Christmas? And I think, you know, as we talked about at the beginning, we kind of many people might have thought the same about their summer. You know, I usually do this in the summer or I usually go out and do this or I get back out on my bike or what am I going to do? And we'll find new ways of, of making it enjoyable and, and doing it the way we want to do it. And like you said, if it's time out of a whole weekend and also you might think, well, now that I am locked down and I'm not going anywhere and I'm not rushing around at a million miles an hour because of life, I can spend a full half day, full day, you know, get some mulled wine in and kind of sit and decorate as opposed to that kind of previous pre-pandemic life of, oh, well, I've got to decorate this weekend because it's Christmas. So let me just bang the decorations up in like two hours and then it's Christmas and that's Christmas ticked off. I really like that thought of especially putting Christmas decorations up early. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so is there anything that you think we should remind ourselves of from the previous lockdown? Thinking about, you know, like you said, we've come a long way and we've learned so much. So it might be easy for us to kind of get not maybe a little bit complacent about, you know, how it all works out. And I think the big one for me and the big one for everyone is making sure that we reach out to each other. Chatting with people and keeping in contact with people and not being able to see people, I think, is the biggest part of lockdown that people are worried about. And I know it's something I'm worried about um, in terms of I like, you know, I don't have a huge swathe of people that I go and see generally, but I like to see my family. I like to see a few of my friends. <laughs> and and there's a I think a nice part in that is that, you know, we're doing this virtually now. I've been doing virtual training sessions. We're kind of more comfortable at this point now with Zoom, Skype, Teams, house party, whatever your sort of video conferencing tool of choice is <laughs> than we were in March. And, you know, before I, I remember I set up a Zoom call with some friends from school who I'd never Zoom called before in my life. I've used 
video tools quite a lot because I've lived outside of the UK and I lived away from home when I was a kid. But I know lots of people have never and they're used to talking to people face to face or at best on the phone. Um, and I remember setting up that Zoom meeting and being a bit like feeling awkward. And now I'm, you know, in their bedrooms with them sort of thing. Um, but now we're all, I think, majority quite comfortable with that idea. And so that's a really good building block for us to start on and you know to remember that reaching out to people and video calling them it's not as awkward as we think it might be it's really accessible um i know people will probably roll their eyes but get your quizzes back going uh. you know, the lockdown quiz was good my group of friends we did a um we did a lockdown quiz and it must have Honestly, it must have been 45 seconds after the announcement on Saturday. My friend messaged me, I've got my quiz ready. <laughs> it's like a really stupid message that was, again, lighthearted about what was going on. But I think, yeah, whatever way you choose to do it um, and whoever it is, reaching out to people and making sure we're all still chatting and talking to each other, I think, is the biggest lesson from the previous lockdown that I think would be worth kind of taking on from my perspective anyway. No, I, I definitely agree. I really do. Um, because you don't know that could make someone's day, you know, just that little message. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, I, you know, not going too far off topic. I think there are times where even with work, it's not the same at times as having someone in the office. You can just sort of w walk over to their desk and gauge if they're busy or not. You're kind of, I'm always working off the assumption that everyone's really busy. So I'm like, oh, maybe I'll call you later or I won't send that out right away. And then when you're at home, it's, the same right you look at your phone and you think i could message my friend but maybe they're doing this and maybe they're doing that and like even the first time round, you sort of think to yourself well, what what else are they going to be doing it's lockdown they're not out somewhere <laughs> but you still have that well should i shouldn't i i think it's a bit of a british thing at times with the way we kind of operate on the telephone but i agree to you like you say send out a message uh, how people are doing or just chat to them about something you know silly or you know sending memes or sending videos that you found just kind of sharing and keeping that interactive interaction sorry going is really key. Agreed. So I know there is often a lot of talk about using lockdown as a time to be productive and we've briefly discussed this um, I didn't do anything productive I didn't learn a new language I didn't read more even though I was determined to read at least 20 minutes a day I just didn't uh, I didn't even cook but I did make pasta from scratch which was you know one thing that's but, really uh, yeah but I didn't really do much what do you think you know should we be productive this one because it's a shorter time or you know should we should I try read more should I put that pressure on myself what do you think so I think the pressure to be productive was a really hard aspect of the last lockdown that kind of you know I so you know you said to yourself I think slightly unkindly I didn't do anything new but I know that you were very busy during the lockdown period I conversely as, as the previous lockdown sort of came in and out of furlough and there were I did have sort of long periods of time where I wasn't working and there was a you know pressure to be productive and I did try and be productive um and learn new things but I work in learning and development so I'd always encourage people to learn new things and I think learning new things and trying to, to develop um, is, is a great thing to try and do and it's a really sort of great aspiration but ultimately doing it for yourself is what you need to be doing so as an example when we design training programs um, and we think about what we're doing the goal is always what benefits the learner what is of the most benefit to you? So if you want to read more because you like reading more and you think I'm gonna read 20 minutes a day, that's great. If you read one day and you don't read the other four, you still read one more time than you did previously. So I think, again, kind of being kind to ourselves on lockdown as well, um, doing it for me, you know, what are the things I want to do? I totally agree with you, I had people that, you know, learnt you know suddenly learnt to bake and you know you'd, you'd have thought by some of the social medias that they were going to be on bake-off next year you know, <laughs> baking that we're doing. and i get it people wanted to be productive during lockdown and, and that's a really important thing but like i said not having that pressure on you um you make an interesting point about the time period i think that is an interesting dynamic that will change how we view being productive because you do have a set time 
So when you set yourself goals, you might have heard about them before. They call them like smart targets or smarter targets. And the big one is always time dependent or time period based or whatever part of the acronym you want to use. So you're right. You've got four weeks. You might say, oh, within this four weeks, I can probably reasonably achieve this. And so I want to try. And that's, I think, the key is the trying. Whereas previously on the old in the old lockdown, um, I remember having days where you'd get up and you'd go, well, there's this sort of endless more of time in front of me and I don't know when it's going to end so it's very easy for me to go oh, I'll do it tomorrow yeah but it's also easy to to never find the motivation to start because it seems like such a huge task and so the other thing also as like you said you get given so much time I I remember Holly saying about um there being time to think you have so much time to think that you go or maybe I'll pick up the recorder again, or maybe I'll learn German, or like you said, I'll learn to to make pasta. And it's kind of, you get all these grand ideas and I'm gonna do all of them, and then you end up doing none of them because there's too many things to do. So like you said, if you pick, maybe pick one thing that you wanna try and do, see if you can achieve it. But I think the most crucial point around being productive is if you don't choose to do anything, and you choose to take this time to process what's going on or you know everybody's familiar situations are different so some people won't have the time a singular way to do a lockdown there is no there here's the guidebook for lockdown i wish there was because we'd make you one and send it out to everyone but there isn't so you've got to do what you enjoy and you've got to do kind of what helps you deal with the scenario and kind of helps you manage what gets through but ultimately like you said if you do nothing it's fine that you're under no obligation from anyone to do anything right and i think that's the big takeaway is kind of do it for yourself whatever it is and if that's nothing then cool well thank you christian um for talking with me today um myself and christian will be talking again in two weeks time just to have a little kind of update between ourselves and um see if there's any other tips and tricks that christian might have for you all uh during this lockdown so thank you to Christian who spoke with me today and I just want to remind everyone to keep talking to one another and although it feels like it right now, this won't last forever. <laughs>